seen Making a Murderer. If you haven't, it's a documentary about how a woman's death made so much money for Netflix. <laughs> and then the podcasts, there's Serial, My Favorite Murder, Missing and Murdered, Up and Vanished, Wine and Crime, White Wine, True Crime, True Crime Brewery, True Crime All the Time, <laughs> What the Crime, Crime Town, Crime Junkie, Cold Case, Killer Instincts, To Live and Die in L.A., Someone Knows Something, Man in the Window, Body in the Moor. <laughs> Southern Fried True Crime, <laughs> Drunk Women Solving Crime, which I'm actually on, pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jenna Friedman started her comedy career right here in Chicago while attending Northwestern. She went on to write for Letterman, produce for The Daily Show, and perform on Stephen Colbert and Conan O'Brien. She has a new book out, Not Funny, Essays on Life, Comedy, Culture, etc. And she's also performing at the Den Theater this weekend. Jenna joins us now. Thanks for being with us. Thanks so much for having me. That, got, your rant on the true crime thing is so true. <laughs> I'm guilty. I can't stop. What it, it, I feel morbid and awful every time I'm listening to these stories but, and watching them, but I can't help it. I know. I think it's partly escapist, and it's also we need to know this stuff because <laughs> it's scary out there. So oh. I think it's like catnip for a lot of women. True enough. Jenna, tell us about your roots in Chicago. You, uh, you got started at Northwestern? Yeah, I was um, a senior at Northwestern and I was studying anthropology. And uh, for our thesis, uh, you could write about anything you wanted. And I was always interested in comedy. And because I was in Chicago, people were like, you have to check out improv comedy. And I didn't know what it was. So I was living downtown on Halstead and Roscoe and I walked into Improv Olympic. And I, I guess now it's called IO or now it's gone maybe, but I walked in and they said, well, if you sign up for classes, you can see all the shows you want for free, kind of like any cult. And I got hooked. <laughs> and so I spent a year in that community and I fell in love with comedy. And how, sir, you know, doing comedy now, there's so many things that seem to be off limits now. What do you, what do you say about all that? I think there have always been things that have been off limits. Uh, Mae West was arrested. Lenny Bruce was arrested. George Carlin was arrested for their words. So while it does feel like the Wild West right now with what we can and we can't say, it, it has always been like that for comedians. And I think it's important as we talk about cancel culture, which I do talk about in my book, we should kind of contextualize it in a larger history of comedy and what people have and haven't been allowed to say and uh, how how in trouble people have gotten for what they've said. Yeah, tell us a little Dating bit more. back to Socrates and before. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah, so, so tell us a little bit more about this book here. Uh, you, you write that you uh, include many stories taking on those who uh, told you that you were too brash. Do you feel like you've been swimming upstream your career? I think a lot of uh, women and marginalized people have, and only recently uh, those voices have been really championed and amplified and, and paid. Um, but I do attribute all so much of my uh, career to just being in Chicago. The crowds have always been so supportive. I really felt like I could uh, stretch my wings and explore and find my voice in that city. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I talk about it in the book. I talk about this play that I wrote that was a satire on, on American Girl Dolls. And it was critically panned in Chicago, and then I took it to New York, and it did really well. <laughs> That's awesome. That's the, uh, the uh, what was that called? The Refugee Girls Review? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a parody on the American Girls Review that ran at the American Girls store. On oh, Michigan I Act. saw it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was a sales pitch for the whole collection. It sure was. <laughs> then I think that there was a New York Times expose about how the girls in the actual show were themselves um, non-union actors playing explo exploited child laborers. Oh, like, it was boy. so funny you could not write this. Right. So I just, <laughs> it was like the perfect thing to parody. Well, you can see Jenna at the Den Theater Sunday night. Get all the details on the websites on your screen. You could follow her on social media. Jenna, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you so much.